So, last time we learnt how to write supersymmetry algebra. So, let me summarize. So, we realize if we have n supersymmetric charges, then they satisfy the algebra Q alpha anti commutator with Q bar alpha j is twice delta i j sigma mu p mu alpha alpha dot. And Q alpha i with Q beta j is 2 root 2 epsilon alpha beta z i j. And Q bar alpha i Q bar beta dot j is 2 root 2 epsilon alpha dot beta dot z bar i j. What z are scalar charges, central charges. And with other Poincare generators, they satisfy commutator q alpha i with p mu 0 so is q bar alpha dot i with p mu. And q alpha i with the Lorentz generator commutator is half sigma mu nu alpha beta q del beta i and q bar alpha dot I commutator with Lorentz generators is half sigma bar mu nu alpha dot beta dot q beta dot i. In addition, we also learned that such an algebra can accommodate a largest a large internal symmetry group largest possible internal symmetry un which rotates the q alpha i's amongst themselves That is Q alpha i in the U i j, where U i j is a unitary n cross n unitary matrix Q alpha j and Q bar alpha dot j transforms as Q alpha dot i j U dagger j. And if I write an element of u i j as exponential i zeta a i j, then q's satisfy with a runs from 1 to 2 to n square satisfy the algebra where T A i j s are the representation matrices in the fundamental representation in the defining n dimensional representation of u n times q alpha j and q bar alpha dot 
j i is minus q alpha dot bar j t a j i. T a is a Hermitian matrices. That is what we learned last time. Now, today, what do we do? Yeah, there is an immediate consequence of this algebra. That immediate consequence is that in supersymmetric theories, in SUSI theories, energy. operator is always non negative energy operator means hamiltonian eigen values of hamiltonian are always zero or positive and this consequence follows very simple way let's construct states construct states q alpha i acting on some state psi and also construct q bar alpha dot i acting on psi. And let me take the norm of these states q alpha i psi norm square for a given value of i and sum over alphas, alpha takes value 1 and 2. So, it is sum of two vectors for a given value of i, i is not summed, alpha 1 gives you one state square mod square and alpha equal to 2 gives you another these two states. And to this let us add the norm of this state and square it up and sum over alpha dot says 1 dot 2 dot for a given i. So, for a given i that is you do not sum over i's only alphas are summed here alpha dots are summed here. Now, norm of a state is positive number. So, this is adding up positive numbers the sum of four positive numbers two here two here. Let me light this explicitly. That is what the norm of this state is this and a dagger of that, where alpha is summed alpha 1 here, alpha 1 dot here, second term is alpha 2 here, alpha 2 dot here. and similarly write this one. That is just the long hand for this the norm of the state. And let me now reorganize this as a, this plus this, this is q i alpha q dot i and this is the reverse order. So, it is an anti commutator.
Now, this algebra tells us what that anticommutator is. For a given value of i, i is the same value, so this delta ij is 1, it is this object with alpha alpha sum, this is 1, 1 dot, 2, 2 dot. So, this is summation psi sigma mu p mu of alpha and alpha dot psi. Alpha dot up, you know how to raise and lower, you multiply by an epsilon that raises it up. Now, this sum is sum over values alpha 1, one alpha 1 dot plus alpha 2 plus uh, uh, alpha 2 dot. But what is that? That is simply psi trace of sigma mu. Trace in the spinner indices. Now, let us see what was sigma mu for us. Sigma mu was for sigma 0, we had an identity and sigma 1, 2, 3, it was 3 poly matrices. So, the only traceless object here is 1, sorry, uh, yeah, traceless ob 1, trace of sigma i's are 0. So, the only piece that contributes is this one and trace of 1 is, is a 2 cross 2 matrix is 2. something I have missed. There was a factor of 2 here also in the algebra, right. So, this should have been 2 here and this should have been 4. So, what, do I, what we have shown is that the expectation value of P0, operator P0, P0 is Hamiltonian, is sum of positive objects because these are squares, mod squares. So, therefore, it can be positive or at worst 0, it can never be negative. <coughs> now, in, in a, if I have a theory where vacuum itself is supersymmetric, what does vacuum supersymmetry mean? Supersymmetric vacuum. Means that I have a state vacuum state, call it 0 ket, q alpha i acting on 0 is 0, that would make it supersymmetric. And q alpha bar i on vacuum is 0. That is a supersymmetric ground state of a theory. If I have a theory which is supersymmetric ground with a supersymmetric ground state, it will have this property. And if that be so, then for such a theory, 4 times 0 p 0 would be from here. Q is 0, 0 norm of a 0 state, 0 state is 0. So, which means in such a theory vacuum energy will always be 0 in a supersymmetric, in a theory where in a theory where vacuum is invariant under supersymmetry, vacuum energy is always 0. 
So, if I were to write a supersymmetric field theory, field theory uh, can have scalar fields and vacuum of uh, scalar field theory is defined by the minimum of the potential for those scalar fields. So, in a supersymmetric theory, the potential of the scalar fields has to be always such that its vacuum has a value 0. Is that clear? On the other hand, if supersymmetry were spontaneously broken, if Suzy is spontaneously broken, when do we say a symmetry is spontaneously broken? What does the word spontaneously breaking mean? These words mean? It means that your Hamiltonian is supersymmetric invariant, but your ground state is not. So, which means in a theory, while q alpha i on vacuum is not 0 and q alpha dot bar i vacuum is not 0. Whenever a symmetry generator on vacuum is non-zero, that is the situation when symmetry is broken spontaneously. Those of you who have studied Sennan model of particle physics, say that you break the Sennan model gauge group by giving vacuum a non-zero expectation value, hmm? which means vacuum does it is not does not respect the symmetry whereas the Lagrangian is invariant or action is invariant under symmetry. So, this in such cases what would happen clearly in that case such a case the vacuum energy will always be positive. So, if I were to draw this in terms of graphs, a potential in a super severe field theory will always have a behavior that at the minimum this is super symmetric would be always 0. So, potential some function of scalar fields so as a function of fields bottom of the potential will always be at a value when b phi is 0. Whereas, if you have a spontaneously broken supersymmetry, it will always be like this spontaneously broken. So, this is a nice property of supersymmetric theories. So, if you want to check sometimes in a supersymmetric theory whether symmetry is broken spontaneously or not, you just calculate the vacuum energy and figure it out. If it is non zero, then you understand that, that in that theory supersymmetry is spontaneously broken. Okay, that uh, is now. Next, let us try next thing that we will discuss is let us try to study representations of this algebra supersymmetry algebra. We will discuss the representations of this algebra. Representations of Suzy algebra on one particle states.
and let me start with massive representations particles are massive massive particles we will consider massless particles separately now for a massive particle we have already discussed this we can always choose its rest frame where p mu is m 0 0 0 and m is the mass of the particle p square is m square in units when we have taken velocity of light equal to 1. And we have discussed it earlier saying that for such a situation this vector is left invariant by rotations that mix the three space directions. The little group of this vector we give a name to that group a little group is the group of rotations in these three directions because they all have value 0 rotate them amongst themselves they stay the same. So, the little group is generated by rotation generators J L. with the standard algebra that we have written several times of the generators J L J M commutator as I times epsilon L M N J N. Now, let us look at what this algebra looks like when P mu for these kinds of particles. So, let me write down first the second set q alpha i q beta j commutator that is central charge, but let us think of a case when central charges are 0. So, central charge is 0. So, z is 0 we will consider the case when central charges are non 0 later. So, that is one piece of the algebra then conjugate piece of the algebra then the algebra q alpha i q alpha dot j bar. from here let me put 2 uh, delta i j then I have sigma mu times p mu and for the p mu for these particles has only first component. So, it is sigma 0 and sigma 0 is an identity matrix. So, let if I put it alpha up here j here alpha alpha dot times m p 0 is m.
Now, let me do a little bit of rescaling q alpha i divided by root 2 m and give it a new name a alpha i. and q alpha i bar i root 2 m and give it an another name a alpha i dagger or this alpha i here. This is dagger of that and call this object a dagger alpha i. I have changed notation, change of notation, notice ch no change of notation. Alpha dot has been changed into alpha in this. That is just ch convenient change of notation. what was 1 dot here, we call it 1, what was 2 dot here, we call it 2 and it, this is distinguished from this one by dagger, we put explicitly dagger there. Now, with this in the renaming, what happens to that algebra? Is that clear? Some convenient relabeling so that you can come into an expression which you perhaps by now may have recognized what it is. If you had an a set of n harmonic oscillators, the creation operators and destruction operators for them would satisfy this kind of an L algebra except that in, instead of being n d commutators, they would be commutators. Is that clear? Harmonic oscillators, creation and destruction operator algebra, n of them is exactly the same except that you would have commutators here and h cross equal to 1, right? You would have h cross on the right hand side somewhere. All this is instead of commutators, they become anti commutators. And these A's and A daggers in the harmonic oscillator are commuting operators in the sense that when you take them across, they do not, I mean, they are anti commuting here. So, it is a set of N fermionic oscillators. that is supersymmetry, we are doing now representation of this algebra, supersymmetric vacuum, right. So, we are not talking about vacuum supersymmetry, in fact, I use the word vacuum that is sometimes confusing, but I will see you, okay. So, now point is that is the vacuum of the supersymmetric theory, we are talking about this algebra right now and trying to build up representation of this algebra and algebra ha we have converted into an algebra of n anti commuting oscillators or n fermionic oscillators. And now, we would like to study a, rep a representation of this algebra and we will do it exactly the way we construct the representation for bosonic oscillators. Is that you choose a vacuum state which is annihilated by 
destruction operators. So, vacuum state. Now, this vacuum is not the vacuum of the field theory, but it is the vacuum or state omega is vacuum state of this algebra. We call the word vacuum, we could have called it starting state, give it some other name. So, hmm? so that is why vacuum in inverted commas. It is not the ground state of a supersymmetric field theory. It is a starting state from which you would like to construct the algebra and the representations of this algebra. So, pick up a state psi omega on which a alpha i on omega are all 0 and call that state vacuum in this context. Is that clear? And this for all values of 1, 2, 3 and n and alpha 1 and 2. So, in fact, we do not have n oscillators, but we have set of 2 n oscillators. I takes 1, 2, 3 value, alpha takes 1 and 2. Now, this starting state or the vacuum state could have some angular momentum. It could be in some representation of the Lorentz group. So, this state vacuum state or the starting state could have some mass would have the mass because we think of writing a massive representation would have the mass m and would have some j value and j z value where j is associated with the eigenvalue of the angular momentum that is so on such a state p square acting on vacuum is m square j square vector j square acting on vacuum is j into j plus 1 and j z acting on this vacuum is j z is that. So, we say some we start with some given representation of the lot uh, of the rotation group with spin j and third component of spin j, j z and we know j z will take values of minus j minus j plus 1 up to plus j. Is that clear? This vacuum is different from that vacuum because then that vacuum p square would be 0, j square would be 0, j z would be 0, right? The vacuum we discussed that is the vacuum of the full algebra, full super uh, uh, point carré uh, algebra, but this is the vacuum of this algebra or a starting state with these properties and we will build up now a representation by acting the dagger operators on this state. So, create states by operating a dagger alpha i on vacuum state. 
exactly the way the way we do it for harmonic oscillator except that it is now it, this is a fermionic harmonic oscillator. Now to do this first we would like to know how do J L's what is the algebra of J L's this rotations how do the rotations act on these operators A and A dagger. So exercise show that J L commutator well first let me let me do this not give you an exercise. Now J L commutator with Q alpha dot i this operator is from Q beta dot i sigma l alpha beta dot it is beta dot first and alpha next. Let me do that on the side and I will show you how that works. Let us recall m mu nu with q alpha dot i is minus sigma mu nu bar alpha dot beta dot q bar beta dot i half factor here. If you notes if you look at it up I had listed it this first and this second and that was a plus sign here. So, I have just interchanged these. Now, let me lower this one down here. these epsilon symbols. Now multiply by an inverse epsilon here or call it lambda alpha dot sigma bar alpha dot beta dot epsilon beta dot gamma dot q alpha q gamma dot bar i. Multiply by inverse this goes away this it comes here. Now uh, mu nu this object I had given an identity for, for you to prove is minus sigma mu nu bar with beta lambda interchanged hmm. uh, b, uh, uh, with gamma dot here and uh, sorry how, how does this go? Yes, gamma dot here, lambda dot here, q gamma dot i. So, let me write one more step. This whole thing is minus sigma mu 
gamma dot lambda dot this whole thing this was an exercise I had given earlier changes sign so this is one half q gamma dot i sigma mu nu r gamma dot something has gone wrong some indices have gotten mixed up uh, this should have been this should have been lambda here right Now let me take M L K component of this. M L K is same as epsilon L K N j n that is how we define j n s. And this was also an exercise that sigma bar l k is epsilon l k n sigma n. What sigma n's are now? 3 poly matrices. And from there, you can read this answer. Is it clear? Take the epsilon k, k out. So, j n this is sigma times sigma n. should have been dot here, right. Now, similarly, if you do the exercise J L Q alpha i is minus half sigma L alpha beta Q beta i. This sign minus here and plus here are very important. In particular, Jz q dot alpha i commutator is half q beta i. J Z beta now let us use explicit form of sigma Z. third poly matrix. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me J Z of Q 1 dot bar i is half Q 1 bar dot i and J Z Q bar i 2 dot is minus half q do dot ri. Right. 
you can write corresponding one for q 1 i What does this imply for these A oscillators, fermionic oscillators that we constructed divided by root 2 m both sides J z of A 1 dagger is minus half A 1 dagger J z of A 2 dagger is plus half A 2 dagger. Now, do I have the signs right because this is very important or the other way around, other way around right see this is an important sign. Yeah, this is with plus sign and this is with minus sign. A dagger commutator, J z A dagger commutator is half A dagger and J z A 2 dagger is minus half. What does that mean? This means that A, A dagger raises the J z eigenvalue by half unit and A 2 dagger lowers it by half unit. In particular, let me take J z on a state A dagger, this is I here, I here, well how did I put I down or up, it does not matter now, but let me put it the same way consistently. A 1 I on a state which has j z eigenvalue j small z. Use this commutator I can write this as a 1 dagger i j z plus half on this state with j z eigenvalue small j z. That is this commutator. and that is A 1 dagger i, j z eigenvalue on this is small j z So, that I write it as j z plus half A 1 dagger i What does this equation mean? Equation means that state A 1 dagger on the state has an j z eigenvalue which is j, j z plus half is an eigenvalue equation. So, it tells me if I apply on a state with given j z the oscillator A dagger 1, I will get a new state whose spin would be j z value would be shifted by half unit. That is A 1 i dagger on a state with j z eigenvalue is, is a state with j z eigenvalue ah. clear.
Now let me do the same thing for A2 dagger oscillator acting on a state with Jz eigenvalue small jz and this algebra will tell me that I will get a state with Jz minus half the same set of steps except that I will have a minus half here minus half minus half minus half here. So, Jz eigenvalue would be Jz minus half. is a consequence of supersymmetry algebra. Now, supersymmetry algebra tells me that the, these special oscillators that I have constructed A1 type of oscillators creation operators will shift the Jz value by a plus half unit and A2 type dagger out operators will shift the Jz eigenvalue minus half. Now, this is good enough for us to write down the representations. Let me just table them. So, state with uh, well number of states, number of independent components j spin and j z spin. So, start with the, the starting state what we call vacuum stating for this algebra and let me write it here. It had a mass m, angular momentum j and j z eigenvalue small j z and this was one state. And depending upon whether j is integer or half integer, it is a boson or fermion. So, it could be a boson or fermion. And j spin value is j z. And on this state, let me apply A alpha i dagger. When alpha is 1, it will shift spin here to when alpha is 2, it will. So, there are two states, two sets of states, and for every value of i, I will have two states. So, there are two n of them. One set a, n in number will have j z spin this, other one have j z spin this and this object is nothing but combinatoric 2 n of 0. And if this was a boson, now this has become which means the integer spin object j z values were integer spin. Now, it is would become 
half integer. So, it will become a fermion and if it was a fermion, it will become a boson. Now, let me apply two of them A alpha 1 I 1 dagger A alpha 2 I 2 dagger on vacuum. Now, alpha 1 can have values 1 and 2, alpha 2 can have values 1 and 2, I 1 can have values 1 to n, I 2 can have values. But something is important. The pair alpha i, alpha 1, i 1 can never take values which are equal to the pair. The reason being these are fermionic oscillators, square of each one of oscillators is 0. Is that clear? If this set of values is same as this set of values, the square of the same operator that from the algebra itself that is 0. So, they have to be in both the labels different or at least one label different. both alpha label and i label different values or both labels different. But if they have the same values for the pair, then that object is not here. And then if you normalize it by 1 by root 2, by 1 by root 2 factorial, now since this has, now what would be the spins now? This would in increase or decrease this one by half unit will make 1, uh, that is uh, A1, A1 type of an oscillator will increase it by half unit, A2 type of an, uh, uh, dagger oscillator will decrease it by half unit. So, that would be Jz and here So, some of the states will have Jz value Jz plus 1, sorry, some of them will have Jz and some of them will have Jz minus 1, is that clear? And again if this was a fermion, this would be a boson and if this was a fermion, a boson, it will be a fermion. But how many of them are there? The set of possible values for this label is 2n. There are two of these, n of these. But no pair has to be repeated. Is a 2n cross 2n matrix anti symmetric. So, what are the number of components? right. Now, you go on add 3 set of these uh, apply 3 sets of dagger operators 4 sets and so on and so forth till you get finally, when you apply all of them alpha 1 i 1 a dagger alpha 2 i 2 a 2 n dagger i 2 n. And note, no pairs have to be repeated, alpha 1 i 1 is not equal to alpha 2, alpha 2 i 2 is not alpha 3 i 3. alpha 3 i 3 and so on and so forth, no pair is to be repeated. And then, since they contain all the oscillators, this is only one state, there are n of them. 
So just normalization factor of 2n factorial and this is 2n, 2n that is 1. Because there is only one state where all the hormone, uh, all the A dagger oscillators are hit. And since this is 2 n number of oscillators, that is even number of oscillators. So, this is even number of states. If it was a boson, it will be a boson here. If the starting state was a fermion, it will be a fermion here. Clear? Huh? They became alternately by Borean Borean, but the last one, when you take all the steps here, there will be even number of states, sorry, odd, odd number of st steps, odd number of steps, odd number, yes, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 2 n, right, odd number of steps. What would be the JZ spin value? Because this is the last state where we have constructed. There is an equal number of A1s and A2s in this because they are all oscillators. So, A1s raise the spin by half unit, JZ spin by half unit, A2 lower by half unit. So, So, we have now essentially constructed the representations of the, the massive super multiplet of supersymmetric algebra. The most general representation. What is the total number of states? Let us in this multiplet, this is one multiplet, total number of states in this multi in this super multiplet. This is you just sum all of these. sum 2 n C n, n equal to 0 to 2 n. Does anybody know what this answer is? This is a funny way of writing 1 plus 1 to the n. on 1 plus n, uh, 2 n, right. So, that is the total number of states for n equal to 1, this is 2 to the power 2, 4. And if the starting was a boson, is a boson, fermion, boson, well, yes, no, one boson, two fermions, and one boson. This is one state for n equal to 1, this is 2 and there are no, no 1 and the last one that is 1. So, one 
bosonic state, two fermionic states and one bosonic state. And if the starting one was a fermion, an important property of supersymmetric theories. In a super multiplet, the number of bosonic states and fermionic states are all always equal in number. We, we see them by construction. Okay. For n equal to 2, then total number of states 2 to the 4 is 8, 2 to the 4 is 16 and that is first one is 1, second one is 4, third one is c to the 4, 2, 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, how much is that? 6, the next one, so they break up into and if this is a boson, these are fermions, bosons, fermions, bosons or if they are fermions, boson, fermion, boson, fermion. So, we have let us say take this one 1 plus 6 plus 1, 8 bosonic and 4 plus 4, 8 fermionic. Is that clear? N equal to 4. To the how much is that? To the 2 to power 8, to 256. So, that is 1 plus now 8 C 2 is well this is 8, 8 factorial 6 factorial 2 factorial how much is that? Twenty eight. Yes. Huh? Can do it through also. No special reason. Just, just because for some reason, even values are more interesting. We we'll, we may see that later. So that's why. And the next one would be. 8 C 3, 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 3 factorial. How much is that? Now, I will see my notes, 56. Next one is 70, then 56, 28 plus 1, then they keep going on. So, Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi, Bose, something is not right. Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi. Did I miss something? I missed 8 here. (coughs) 
and then Fermi, Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi, Bose, Fermi. Again, Bose and Fermi, uh, bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom are equal. Bosonic degrees, how many of them? Let's say this plus this plus this plus this plus that. Is it 120? Yeah, half of this. Hmm? So, 128 bosonic and 128 fermionic states. Now, we have listed how to construct massive representations of, log, uh, of uh, supersymmetric algebra. Now, the starting state that we took here, we called it vacuum state, had some given value of j and jz. j could in particular be 0. Right. So, if the starting spin j is 0, we get what are called ir are irreducible multiplets. But if starting j is non zero we get reducible multiplets means they are made up of one or two multiplets which amongst themselves are supersymmetric amongst them themselves under supersymmetry they go into each other now let's me construct some simple examples. Take the vacuum state to be <coughs> a scalar. These oscillators A1 types increase value of J half. You are saying that for a given set of N, given value of capital N, there will be some of these states which may not be there because they will uh, take you out of thickness. Yes, that is true. You guess, I think in my notes I have given those conditions for you. I am skipping it here. You just look it up. And, uh, and and see what uh, that is. What is the highest value and what are the lowest values that J's can have? But let me take this example, simple example. Take the starting state with spin zero. That's a scalar particle. And let me and let me take 
n equal to 1. So, I have one set of oscillators A1 dag dagger acting on vacuum. Now, this one will increase the spin by half, Jz value for half. This will become half. For a state which has Jz value half, what would be its J value? Half, because only half state can have Jz value half. This one will decrease the Jz value. So, that would be m Jz value minus half, J value would be J half. So, this was a scalar here. These two states. Or spinner, they make a two component spinner of spin half. And then I can apply A1 dagger and A2 dagger on omega, that will give me a state because there is an equal number of A and A dagger, spin 0, Jz does not change value. But this state is not the same as this state, it is a different state because there is A dagger, so call it a prime, just to distinguish from the omega. So, that is it, this is my super multiplet. It has a scalar and a spinner and a scalar. It is made up of two sc real scalars and one major on a spinner, all of them having same mass. So, this is a scalar super multiplet, Ma scalar massive super multiplet. Name scalar for it because it contains a scalar field. Not that everything it contains a scalar. It contains a scalar and a super partner. Two scalars and a super partner. Two scalars, two real scalars or one complex scalar. So, two scalar states, scalar particle states and one two component spinner state, state with mass. A two component spinner state and mass is not a Dirac particle because Dirac particle, a massive Dirac particle is a four component state. So, this is only two component. So, it is a made up of two scalar states and one Majorana fermion. A Majorana fermion has only two degrees of freedom and it can be massive of same mass. Now, next example, instead of taking a scalar as the vacuum state or starting state for constructing this ladder of states, let me take spinner to be as the starting state. So, this is you see the word vacuum was perhaps a misplaced because 
ordinary physical vacuums are not spinners. So, vacuum is only in this context of as the starting state for this construction, this word. Hmm? So, you take omega to be a spin half state. Now, a spin half state can have jz value plus half, so we will call it omega plus. or which way I have written it down. I think I will write first this one and this one second. So, I could take two of them. I could take either one of them and build up a multiplet, but I could take up two of them because if two of them together make a particle. So, two ground states that is what makes a spinner and construct uses construction to create the ladder on this and ladder on this and see what, what do I get and again we are doing n equal to 1. So, operate a 1 dagger on omega minus. Now, a 1 dagger increases the j z value. by half unit. So, it will become 0. A 2 dagger on omega minus increases the value sorry decreases the value. So, it is minus 1. A 2 dagger decreases j z value so, that by half unit, so that is minus 1. And then if I apply A 1 dagger and A 2 dagger, that will not change j z value. But this state is different from this state because of this, it is an A dagger. So, give it a different name called prime. Now, similarly, let me do it here a dagger on omega plus will increase by half unit a 2 dagger on omega plus will decrease by half unit and a 1 dagger a 2 dagger on omega plus. is that fine and this is different from this. So, give it a different name. <coughs> now, what do we have and also this is different from this one. So, give it a different name. Have I done that? Yes. Now, we have two states with spin 0, j z spin 0. All right, before that, let me take uh, these ones. Now, uh, this object and this object a 1 dagger a 2 on omega this was minus minus and a 1 dagger a 2 dagger on omega plus make a spinner m half plus minus half. and this is different from these together make a spinner. So, put a prime on it. 
Now let me look at these two. A1 dagger on omega minus plus A2 dagger on omega plus. Linear combination of these two objects makes a singlet. Maybe normalize it by half or root, or root half. An anti symmetric combination is a component of a vector. A vector representation with spin 0 has j z values plus 1, minus 1 and 0. So, this with a 2 dagger on omega and a 1 dagger on omega plus make a massive vector representation, vector representation Lorentz group. Is that clear? In this case, we had two bosonic plus two fermionic degrees of uh, uh, states, two bosonics in the real scalars, one and one and two fermionic. Here we have four bosonic plus four, um, four fermionic and bosonic are one scalar. one scalar and one vector. One, two, three, a massive vector has three components. Is that right? Yes. Did I count correct? Yes, and these are two for two fermions, two fermions, fermion states, each of them with two components omega plus and omega minus and and these two. Is that clear? So, this super multiplet is a vector massive vector super multiplet, it is made up of a scalar field, a massive scalar field, a massive vector field, scalar field with one independent degree of freedom, a vector field with three independent degrees of freedom and two sets of Majorana fermions each with 2 degrees of freedom or 2 independent components. Now, I leave an exercise. For n equal to 1, construct the super multiplet with omega plus minus 
m 1 0 1 and omega 0. Take the starting state to be spin 1. Convince yourself that you will get 6 bosonic plus 6 fermionic states. Six bosonic states will organize themselves into two spin one vectors E each with three components and these six will organize themselves into spin three half representation which has four components plus spin half representation two components. Spin three half would have jz values plus three half plus half minus half minus three half those are the four here this will have jz values plus half minus half those are there. So, this is the field content of it. Now, one oh, I think we have run out of time, but let me take a few more minutes before one final remark. For n equal to 1 theory, we construct, constructed the simplest multiplet, this was the scalar super multiplet. It had only scalars and fermions. If I want to write a field theory for this set of particles, I can always write a quantum field theory. It will be a quantum field theory of a scalar field and a fermion, a complex scalar and a, uh, and a Majorana fermion and both massive. So, I can write a renormalizable quantum field theory for them. This multiplier. This multiplier that I constructed, it has a vector field in it, spin 1, a massive vector field. I cannot construct a renormalizable quantum field theory for massive vector fields. Is it clear? If I put a mass term for a vector field, the theory becomes non renormalizable So, this does not give me a renormalizable uh, possible renormalizable quantum field theory. This one does. And then the exercise that I gave you there, which ha has spin 3 halves and spin 1s and you cannot write a consistent theory, a renormalizable theory for a, any of these. So, which means you can write a renormalizable quantum field theory only for n equal to 1 scalar super multiplet. That is one remark. If I were to do n equal to 2 or n equal to 3, 4, 5 and set up representations like this. Clearly, even if I, I had started with this, I would have another set of oscillators here in addition to this for n equal to 2, another pair of oscillators and then I would have increased this j z spin to possible value plus 1, which means that a multiplet would necessarily have a spin vector, ve vector spin component. So, I cannot have n equal to 2 or higher. Uh, 
quantum field theories, this is for massive ones. Mass is important, we are digging map n equal to 2 or higher renormalizable massive theories. The only one is n equal to 1. It is the super multiplet for n equal to 1. Is that clear? Because this is an important conclusion. But if I have massless fields, then I can do that and that we will discuss next time. So, you can build up renormalizable theories with massless vector fields. And if we have to give masses to them, we write down massless vector fields and then give them masses through Higgs mechanism. That we will discuss next time.